compares an akazo so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church boy to be empty. The journey from earth to heaven is not orchestrated by plane. It's orchestrated by the Holy Ghost. So you must insist that although we have aircraft now, supersonic aircraft, but we insist on the Holy Ghost. Because one day we will need this flight. This flight that does not carry men from, 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 from Sydney to Canberra. This flight that carries men from earth to eternity. This flight that carries men from death to life. We need this particular flight. So thank God for the plane, but we insist on the Holy Ghost. This is why we cannot be deceived to think we can live without God. The way we were designed, we were designed with a vacuum. Until God fills us, we can never be fulfilled. We can never be fulfilled. So when the outpouring comes, the outpouring comes to restore dominion. And the way it restores dominion is to bring back the nature of God and the likeness of God. But listen, the first outpouring that took place brought Christ into us. Because that's the custodian of all of God's reality. That's why at the upper room, when they received the Holy Ghost, they were born again. They were filled and Christ entered into them. In fact, Jesus breathed upon them first and said, receive the Holy Ghost. And he planted God on their inside. So that at the upper room, the outpouring, we activate those dimensions. So some of you here are born again. That's Jesus breathing on you and saying, receive life, receive the Holy Ghost. But you need the upper room experience for that life to be animated. Because if that activation does not happen, although you are born again, you can't establish God's kingdom. Because even in your own life, God's kingdom is not there. Jesus does not have his place. The desires of God can be fulfilled. God can be worshipped. God can be known. The righteous character of God can be expressed. And the authority to bring God's government to a place is not there. Let alone where you walk. You are born again. No argument with it. But you need activations of those dimensions. He breathed on them first so that he will enter into them. But he came upon them so that they can be energized for kingdom advancement. This is why outpourings brings empowerment. And this empowerment has a protocol. I want to show you tonight very quickly how that protocol takes place. So that you too will not just be invigorated but you become kingdom agent for kingdom advancement. Hmm. nature to us before the outpouring activated God extend his nature to us through the envelope of the person called Christ because he is the conveyor of the fullness of God when you begin to study about Christ there are four major dimensions you find the first dimension you find is him as God the son the second dimension you find is him as son of God. The third dimension you find is him as son of man. And the fourth dimension you find is him as the Christ. Now, if you have the revelation of this fourth dimension, then you have the revelation of the complete personality called Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. He is God the son because he is eternally co-equal with the father. That means the father is not bigger than him and is not bigger than the father. The father did not exist before him, neither will he exist after him. They have always been the same and equal in all eternity. That's why he's called God the son. 
God the son because we discover that later he was called son. But God because he is God. So we didn't call him God the son because we are trying to form a nomenclature for him. It's because in the Godhead, he was the one introduced as son. But before he became son of God, he was first of all God. He was first of all equal with the father. You know, Jesus himself said the father is greater than I. And I'll explain that to you. But before he said the father is greater than I, there was a context in which him and the father are one. Because he was God before he became man. So you need to know him as God so that you can honor him and worship him as God. In John chapter 1 verse 1, it said in the beginning, God created the heaven. It said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was what? God. So Jesus is who? Is God. He is not smaller than God. He is co-equal eternally with God the Father. That's who he is. That's why the Bible said great is the mystery of godliness. It said that God was manifested in the flesh. So Jesus is God in his fullness. No diminishing of capacity. He is God. In fact, when the prophet spoke about him in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, he said a virgin shall give birth. He said for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And he said, the government of this world shall be upon his shoulder. And he said, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. And then the third name he called him is what? Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Because Jesus is equal with the Father. So he's called Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Do we get that? So in this context, we call him God the Son co-equal with the father eternally but now god wanted to save man god wanted to extend his government to man god wanted to extend his reality to the realm of men and the only way god could do it was for god himself to bring that reality because no angel could carry god's full reality no being could carry god's full reality only god at this time could carry the fullness of god's reality so what did god do God decided on an act of his own authority and by the power of his wisdom to become man using the gateway of the womb. And so God entered into a virgin and God was born as man. So the Bible said, and the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth so when jesus became man his jurisdiction of oppression was reduced only to salvation now this is how god functions i teach it humorously most of the time as i'm talking to you now what you hear is sound when god speaks to you you will not only hear sound because the voice of god is not an echo the voice of god is not a sound the voice of god is a person so when God speaks, God comes out of God. Because his word is God. So when God wanted to come into man, he carried his word and put it in the womb of a woman. And flesh covered that word and the word came out. So the word is not a product of biological intercourse. The word was a product of the Holy Ghost coming upon that which was spoken so that it came out as flesh. It was the mystery called incarnation. So when Jesus came out, he became the errand of God to save man. So although he is God, but in this context, God gave himself a jurisdiction. That my jurisdiction, why I'm in the flesh, is only to save. That's why Matthew one twenty one said, if the, the virgin shall give birth and you shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. It was in this context of salvation that Jesus said, the Father is greater than me. Not in essence, but in operation. Because right now, although I am still God, my operation is only to save man. So because my operation is limited only to save, him who is doing every order of God's business is greater than me. That's the context in which Jesus was speaking. He wasn't saying God is greater than him because he had diminished in essence. He was saying God was greater than him because operation 
scope of operation had reduced. I make this example. I say two generals, for instance, want to take over a city. And then one of the generals disguises as a spy and enters the enemy territory and begins to function maybe as a cleaner. You know, that guy is a general. But in the context of him serving as a spy, he is a cleaner. So that cleaner cannot be as great as the one who still sits as a five-star general. So that cleaner can say, the current general is greater than me. Why? He is commanding the army. I'm just cleaning here. But in essence, I'm also a general. But what we are doing is an understanding between the two of us. So that I can do something that will make me infiltrate the territory. Are you seeing that? So when Jesus was saving man, he was only a savior. So the father was greater than him. But it doesn't mean he's not God. He is still God, but he's a God saving. That was all he was doing at that time. Now, when that war is over, you who is the neighbor of that cleaner, you may assume you are friends. Until the day when the enemy is paraded, you will now suddenly see your cleaner coming with five stars. And then you will discover that your cleaner was always a general. That's when you will see him shake hands with his colleague and say, how are you doing? Because they are equal. It was a purpose that made this one become a cleaner. It's not because it diminished in essence. Does it make sense? So when Jesus was walking as savior, he was no longer God the son. He was son of God. At the time when he was saving, he was son of God. So he ran the errand of salvation. It was in that context that we could receive him. Because if God doesn't step down, we can't receive God. If we receive him, we will collapse. So God decided to step down so that we could receive him. And so every one of us who received the son of God, God now introduces his life into us. Because that life in the son will now become the life that powers us. And so in 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 to 13, the Bible said this is the record. It said God has given us eternal life. And he said, this life is in his son. He said, whoever has the son has life. And whoever has not the son has not life. He said, these things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God, that you may know that you have life. So God is telling us that if we have received Jesus, we have received the life of God. So the whole plan was God attempting to transfer the life that was in him into ordinary man. So that man will have the God life. So the technology of God the Son becoming Son of God was to extend the life of God to you. This is why John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever received him or believeth in him should not perish, but do what? Have everlasting life. So it was God's technology of bringing life into you. So if you have received Jesus right now, you have the life of God. This is what makes you different from the people in the world. You know, the people in the world think we are all the same. Because we all have two ears, two eyes, one mouth, one nose, two hands, and they say, we are all men. We are not all men. Men have different kinds of life. If you study the way man was created, man was designed to have three lives. There is the animal life that is in the blood. You see that in Leviticus 17 verse 11. It said the life of the flesh is in the blood. Then there is the soulish life that is the breath. You see that in Genesis 2 7. God breathed into the man the breath of life. The man became a living soul. But there was another life that he should have eaten. In Genesis 2 9 which is the tree of life. That one is for his spirit. So there is a life that powers the flesh. There is a life that powers the soul. And there is a life that powers the spirit. Now, if you have the life that powers the soul, you can be the greatest inventor. That life has its own powers. It has its own intelligence. But that's not all there is about life. The life that powers the soul cannot do anything for you in eternity. And so God knows that for us to bring his government here and to participate with him in eternity, we will need the life that is in him as spirit. So when Jesus became son of God, the whole idea was to bring life into you. So a Christian is the only creature that has the life of God. That's why only us can establish God's government. If you are waiting for godless people to establish God's government, they will never, they don't care. 
as far as they are concerned, all they need are aeroplanes, bridges, and boats, and a good health care. All of that is good, but in addition to that, you and I need God to be worshipped. You and I need God to be known. You and I need the character of God to believe. The godless man can't think it. The Bible said it means nothing to him. It said the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. Neither can he know them. They are spiritually discerned. In fact, if you say this to a godless person, they say, get out. What do we need that for? I have light. I have water. I have a good transport system. I have good health care. I have salary. What do you mean by that? He doesn't know that this whole life is a moment. There's another realm called eternity coming. He doesn't know. And he doesn't know that the reason he's here is for God's government to be established. But for those of us who have received the life of God, we know by the spirit that our God must be known. Our God must be worshipped. And the character of our God must become our culture. This is why we are receiving this life so that we can be empowered to enforce it. This is why Jesus came. To give you life. So that you become a citizen of heaven and an agent of kingdom advancement. Now that you have received that life, the Holy Ghost needs to activate that life for that life to empower you to establish government. Because that you have that life alone is not enough. Amazingly, that's what you discover. Because you can have that life and demons can still control you. You can have that life and demons can still control a territory. So the outpouring is to activate the power of that life. And when the power of that life is activated, you begin to function like a God man. This is where you can show up. The doctors give up on someone and you tell the person there is eternal life. The doctor can give up on someone and you tell the person there is healing. This is where a nation can be confused and you can bring direction by the wisdom of God. You yourself will not know how, but there is a force on your inside. This is where Christianity begins. You know the problem we have? We only have eternal life, but we don't manifest it. And so the world is asking, what's the use of this your life? Everyone who is living healthy, we provided drugs. Everyone who is living healthy, we provided healthy food. And when we give up, there's nothing you can do about it. And true. So sad. True. When the hospital gives up on a man, most times, churches are helpless. Meanwhile, that is when we should wake up. When the hospital gives up, that's when we should be activated. So that we tell the person, don't worry, the doctors have done their best. That is good. We appreciate them. But your case is not hopeless. When they say the cancer has metastasized, that's when we come in. That's when we come in. We can stop it because we have a life. So if we don't know this, we will never establish dominion. Dominion is not just about talking. It's about manifesting God. When the nation is confused, when leaders are confused, when business owners are confused, that's when your life should switch on. And then you tell them, although this thing looks as if it will not work, but I just know we should do this and do this and do this. And when they do it once, twice, and it works, the next time they will come to you, tell us what to do. That's where dominion comes in. Otherwise, Christianity will become a religion. There's no glory in sitting down here if we cannot activate something that can change our world. And so when we talk worship, it's not to create religious by God. It's because through worship, we draw things from that realm. When we talk knowing God, it's because through knowing God, we draw things from that realm. It's not about religious rituals. It's about advancing into higher dimensions of the God man that you were created to be. But it begins with having the life so that the Holy Ghost can activate it. When the outpouring comes, the force of life is activated. And how does this work? It begins sometimes with hunger. Oh, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, what you discover is that your appetite for God will wake up. Your appetite for God will be activated. That's when you discover that most of the things the devil was doing around you, although you didn't see him with two horns, he was masquerading around you to kill your appetite for God. That's why you discover you could watch movies. You could visit friends. You could sit down and jeez from morning till night. But when you carried your Bible, you dozed off. When you went to pray, you got tired. Because appetite had died. When the Holy Ghost brings the outpouring, appetites are awoken. You will now discover that even while you are driving, 
your heart and your attention is still with God. And you are seeking to know. You are seeking to hear from God. You can be driving and speaking in tongues. Man, takiba, rakato, rakira, paradaska. That's life at work on your inside. You went to see your friend and you were talking. After a while, you break into tongues. Marundi, kile paragata, zagzava, rapadina, sanzoriga, paragatos, taravina, antoria, paragatia, sansa. Listen, it may begin as if, oh, who are these religious fanatics? But wait for a while. As you are praying, sometimes the glory begins to emanate. The Bible said in Matthew 17 verse 2, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to glister. That's when the world will know that you are not just a fair lady with a blonde hair. That's when the world will know you are not just a dark skinned guy with a broad chest. There is glory on your inside. But it will take hunger that leads to prayer for that glory to manifest. The outpouring of the spirit. Do you know that every one of us seated here carries so much glory that can drown Australia? The Bible said, I have put eternity in their hearts. Eternity is on your inside. And that's not all. The Bible said, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Do you know that you alone carry God? Before God entered man, there was no container that could host God. The Bible said, the heaven is his throne. The earth is his footstool. The whole heaven and earth couldn't contain God. But when Jesus showed up, he said he pleased the Father that the fullness of the Godhead should dwell in him bodily. But it was not just the prerogative of Jesus Christ. The Bible said every one of us that received him, he dwelt on our inside. Christ in you is the hope of glory. If God is in you, how big is Canberra? If the creator of Canberra is inside you, how big is Canberra? That means, that means you are bigger than Canberra. Did you not read your Bible? The Bible said you are a city set upon the hill that cannot be healed. Who told you that all your eyes, what this chair carry? This chair is too small to carry you brothers and sisters. You are a city shining over Canberra. You are a city glowing over Australia. But you must know first that there's a life on your inside. That life is what made it happen. And then somebody looks at you and says, you are fired. Me? You can't fire the one who carries the creator of the world. You are just reminding me that my time here is over. It's time to start that company. It's time to start that warehouse. It's time to start that business. I can't be fired. God dwells here. I'm telling you who we are. Listen, we are the one that the world is waiting for. Don't wait for the eighth, ninth, tenth world wonder. This is the last of God's wonder. The man who carries God. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Isaiah said, I and the children the Lord has given to me. We are for signs and we are for wonders. We are for signs and we are for wonders. Why is it possible? There's a life on our inside. There's a life. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Hope you know this program was publicized. Why didn't horses come here? You have horses here. Some of you have dogs in your house as pets. Why didn't they come? You know why? They can't operate in this realm. Even if the advert is on TV, the dog will see it. He can't come. It's not because they are not invited. We invited every entity. We invited donkeys, we invited horses, we invited dogs. The program was for all who could understand. But the unfortunate thing is that although they would have loved to participate, but the life they have didn't enable them. So when they saw the fly, it meant nothing. They are not in the human class. You are not here because you are wearing a suit. No. You are not here because you are wearing a jacket. You are here because you are human. And you understood that this program was necessary for you. There's no education that will make a horse come here. There's no education that will make a donkey come here. Can I tell you something? When God gave you his life, he upgraded you to the God realm too. And so anything happening in the God class, you can participate. The same way the human life enabled you to come here, the God life also enables you to go to the realm of God. This is the foundation of encounters. The reason you saw an angel, the reason God speaks to you, the reason you can ascend is because you have a life. So that life makes you operate in another class. 
you are now a God man. Everything God can do, he now entrusts to you. Jesus was healing the sick. He said, you go heal the sick. He was raising the dead. He said, you go raise the dead. Men don't heal the sick. Men don't raise the dead. Why are you telling me to go do it? Because now the God life is on my inside. That life empowers me to do what God does. But you see, the life can be dormant if you don't walk on it. This is why the Holy Ghost come to stir you. Sometimes the life requires energy. Sometimes the life requires feeding by the word. Sometimes the life requires fellowship. And so when hunger begins, hunger is that which empowers that life. When a child is born in the hospital, that child doesn't need to learn English to start eating. From the hospital, the moment the child comes out, he starts looking for food. Nobody tells the child that the mouth is the gateway for eating. The child uses the mouth to start looking for food. And the moment food comes, the child swallows it. Nobody taught the child to swallow. Because if that child doesn't eat, although it has received life, the child will die. And so if you don't want the God life in you to die, then you must begin to respond to hunger. So when the outpouring comes, what the Holy Ghost does is that he stirs hunger. Some of you discover that prayer has become like breathing. Some of you discover there's appetite for the world. You open the Bible, you read Matthew, you read Mark, you read Luke, you read John, you keep reading Acts, you read Romans. You don't even know what you are looking for. You are just eating everything and anything. And as you are eating, as you are eating, after a while, your hands begin to vibrate. And you don't know what it means. But somebody say, I have cancer. And you touch the person and cancer dies. After a while, your eyes begin to eat you. As you open it, you see another realm. After a while, inspirations begin to come. And you know what to do on your job. It's life and a time. Everyone here is a city. Everyone, not one of us. Now, see the number of us who are here. If all of us are cities, then Australia is too small. How many cities do you have in Australia? See the number of cities that are here. Why are we not shining? It's because our life has not been activated. Hunger came, we shut it down. Some of us shut it down with our routines. Some of us shut it down with movies and distraction. Some of us shut it down with sin. But when the outpouring comes, the outpouring energizes you beyond your weakness. This is why we cry for the outpouring. This is why we cry. Hunger is the first protocol for activating the God life. The second thing that activates the God life is knowledge. 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 When outpouring comes, it opens your understanding so that you can know the things of God. You know, the Bible said, we have not received the spirit that is of this world. 1 Corinthians 2, 12 to 14. He said, but the spirit that is of God he says, so we know the things that are freely given to us by God. He says, which things we speak. Not with words that human wisdom speak it. Speaks, speaks, uh, speaks. But with words that the Holy Ghost speaks. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. He said, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he went further to say, but we have the mind of Christ. And so we judge all things. So when the outpouring comes, what happens is that our understanding is heightened so we begin to know the things of the spirit the knowledge of the things of the spirit is what empowers you to establish god's government there is nobody who services the life that is in him that will be naive in spiritual things that life has an educational syllabus he said they you have an unction from the holy ghost he said and you don't need anyone to teach you he said, for that unction teaches you. That unction teaches you all things. First John 2, 20 and 27. It teaches you all things. This is why you can just come and somebody is plotting something against you. You just know. And you avoid the person. And you don't even know how you know. You wake up. You want to step out. That thing stops you. You don't even know why you stop. But you heard there was a challenge somewhere. Where you should have been. How did you get into that level of precision? It is the education of life. A Christian is supposed to be a wonder, but it will only happen if he gives room to what he carries. Oh, the life of God is in you. That life makes you to live above this realm. 
It makes you to bring God on the scene. It makes you to operate in the God class. It makes you to function like a God man. But see, that life comes with appetites. Service those appetites. As you service those appetites, it will open you up to the divine realm. 